Hello everyone and welcome to Luminar Coffee Break. I'm Angela Andrew and today we're going to talk about how to copy and paste masks to speed up your workflow and make it more efficient. Before we get started, I want to say hello to Harry, Russell, JGmail28, Eileen, so glad you're all able to join us today. Uh, Russ, congratulations on getting your first shot. Harry, I'm so glad to see that you're having good weather in Texas. You guys deserve it after a kind of horrendous couple of weeks. Eileen, good to see you here also in Southern California. I'm in Southern California as well. So from wherever you're watching in the world, so glad you're able to join us today. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm working with an, an image from one of our ambassadors today. It's a really cool shot, contemplative cityscape with a great subject in the foreground. Let me show you the before image here. There's our before shot. So great image, but we did a few things to really bring out a lot of the detail. We added a sky and I'll show you exactly what I did here in a moment. So, and this is what I came up with. All right, so I'm gonna right click on my image. I'm gonna go to adjustments and I'm gonna do revert to original and we'll go ahead and start from the beginning. So the first thing I did was go over to templates and I started by looking through the templates that are available and for this photo and I settled on one here in the big screen category called sunshine. I thought it worked really well for this image. It gave it kind of a nice warm feel to it and brought out some of the details and we'll accentuate those a few more, uh, a bit more with our adjustments. I wanna say hello to Tom, Joe, Pat, so glad you're able to join us today. All right, let's go ahead and go into our edit and let's start with our composition and do a little bit of crop and a little bit of straightening. So you can see the buildings feel like they're leaning a little bit to the right. We also have some distractions here on the side here with this piece of heavy machinery. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead and start by using the perspective tool to go ahead and straighten up those buildings. All right, and then let's go ahead and use Composition AI and see what that recommends for us for our crop. That's an okay crop, but I actually am gonna prefer it to be a little bit more right, probably around there. We'll get rid of that heavy machinery there on the right. A little bit of the foreground is distracting. I like the feeling that he's up on the rocks and by seeing those, those little pebbles in the foreground, it kind of makes, it kind of takes away from the drama of it. It also still feels like it's leaning a little bit. So I'm gonna straighten this out ever so slightly. Maybe right about there. That's good. I'll hit return on my keyboard to commit that crop. Hey, Julie, glad you're able to be here today. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and add a sky. I think the sky up here is okay. There's some detail we could pull out, but I think adding a different sky will be more attractive. So let's go ahead and scroll down to our sky AI in the creative section. And under my sky selection menu, I have a lot of different skies that I've added from the Luminar X membership. And this is an optional membership program that Skyland has. Uh, you get monthly deliveries of skies, templates, and other really cool stuff. I hope you'll go check it out because it's a lot of fun and it's a great value if you're already somebody who goes and buys our sky packs and buys packs of you know, templates, uh, skies, textures, things like that elsewhere on the web. It's an awesome value. So definitely go check that out. I'm going to do use regular clouds three, which is part of the cotton skies pack by Sergi Dolia and go ahead and pop that in there and see what we get. Give that a moment to load up. All right, that looks pretty cool. It adds some nice texture, but obviously the depth of field isn't correct. So let's fix that. I'm gonna use the sky defocus and bring that up quite a bit. Because we have a shallow depth of field, the buildings are out of focus here and the focus just drops off as it goes farther back. Our sky is even farther away. So we want that depth of field to match. I'm gonna pull that sky defocus up quite a bit and just make it blend better into the image. So that's. That's pretty good right about there. I'm also gonna add a good bit of atmospheric haze because I want it to look like it's naturally there and occurring naturally in the photo. And I don't want it to detract from our subject. I just wanted to fill in some of that uh, kind of blank space there at the top. So by bringing that up pretty high, I think that looks good. It looks natural. I will probably also bring off the relight scene and that's gonna take some of the blue tones out of the bottom of our image. And I think pulls everything together quite nicely. Now let's go ahead and work on some of our adjustments here. Now, what I'm, when I look at this, I wanna light, um, excuse me, darken up these rocks here in the foreground to really make our subject stand out. I think I wanna also bring out a little bit of the detail going on here in the background, possibly pop those colors a little bit. So let's go ahead and start with our structure tool. That's gonna to give us a midtone contrast, bring up some of that detail. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Now, one thing I love about this tool is it's human aware 
So you don't necessarily need to mask, but in this instance, I really don't want any of that structure landing on our subject here. And while it's going to avoid his skin tones, the tool, because it's, it's human aware, it is gonna pick up some of the details in his clothes and I wanna pull that back. So let me go ahead and grab my masking tool on Structure AI, and I'm gonna to go to the ellipses menu here and click Show Mask. And that's going to, if I go ahead and click on Erase, I can then start to erase that mask off of our subject. So I'm gonna make my brush smaller using the bracket key on my keyboard and just erase this mask off of our subject. And I'll move my mouse, or my, excuse me, my bracket keys back and forth here a little bit just to get the size of my brush right. You don't have to be super precise because like I said, this tool is human aware. So if there's a little bit of overlap onto him, it's not the end of the world, but I'm trying to remove most of that effect from him. We can even zoom in, let's go ahead and zoom into 100%, and we can clean up that mask a little bit better. If we wanna paint it back in, if we got a little too aggressive here in some of the areas, we can always hit the X key on our keyboard to change that back into paint and paint that in a little closer to the edges. Get in there a little bit better. All right, and maybe even make my brush really small. Get this area here under his arm, so keep it looking natural. And then I'll hit the X key on my keyboard again to brush out that spot there that got covered that I didn't want. And you can get in here and you can get as detailed or be as loose with it as you want. Having a nice soft edge brush will let you be a little bit more, um, I don't wanna say careless, but you don't have to be as careful. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that X key again. I'm just gonna color back in a little bit this area here around the edges. Again, you can be as detailed as you want. For what we're doing today, oops, I'm not sure how that happened right there. Give me just a second. Let me go ahead and hit that X key, brush that back out. All right, there we go. I think that's a good mask for what we're doing today. I'm gonna go ahead and close up my structure tool. And now we have our mask. Now, what if I wanna use that same mask with another tool? Again, go back into the structure tool. I have my mask here. I can go to the ellipses menu and hit copy. And now I can copy that mask to anywhere else I wanna use in the program. I'm gonna use that by going over here to local masking. And I'm going to go to add and basic. And let me zoom back out so we can see the rest of the image here. And I want to, I want to darken up the rocks here in the foreground. I want to keep the brightness, the lightness of the rest of the scene, but I feel like the rocks are a little bit bright. So let me go ahead, I'm going to go to my ellipses and paste that mask. And now if I go, you can show and hide the mask overlay here with hide mask or by using the uh, forward slash in your keyboard. Super helpful to have. Now, right now I only want to have that mask affecting the bottom portion of the image, and I don't want it to have it affecting our subject. So what I can do then is just grab that erase brush, make it nice and big. We already have our cutout here on the bottom of the subject, so I can then modify that mask, erase it from the top of the image, and now it's only gonna be affecting the bottom of the image, and our subject is protected. So I can go ahead and use that forward slash key on, the, on my keyboard to turn off that mask overlay, and now we can manipulate just those rocks. I'm gonna pull the exposure down just a little bit, maybe right about there, and maybe also pull down the highlights. There we go, that looks a lot better to my eye, and it just makes us focus a little bit more in our subject, as, as opposed to while the rocks are brighter, it's kind of competing. So the last thing I wanna do with this image is add a subtle vignette to go ahead and bring everything in, draw our eye further into our subject, but you can see how taking that first mask we created, which was a little bit more detailed, we can copy it and modify it and paste it to other tools and into the local masking, and hopefully that will speed up your workflow and your local adjustments. So let's go ahead and add that final touch of a vignette. I'm gonna scroll down here to the vignette tool, and I'm gonna move that amount slider all the way down to negative 100, and I'm gonna bring my size down smaller, and what I'm wanting to do is make the size roughly the size of my subject. So I'm gonna bring it in right about there, I'll go to my advanced settings, I'm gonna bring that feather up really, really high for a nice smooth transition, and maybe even add a little bit more inner light. And again, that's just gonna draw your eye to your subject. Now I'll go up to choose subject, and I will click that around so my subject is now in the middle of that vignette. And obviously right now it's very dark, it's very bold, not what we want. I'll grab that amount slider and drag that back up to the point that I think it looks natural. And it just ever so slightly brings you in 
but it's not something that screams out at you that somebody added a vignette. So there's my tips for today. Make sure you, when you make those masks, know that you can copy and paste them. It is so incredibly helpful. And any of these tools, if you go into the masking, you click on that, click on the ellipses right there, you have copy and paste. So any of those masks that you, cre that you create can be transferred between tools and even over to the local masking. You can then use the brush tool to further refine it if you need to. So I hope that was helpful for you guys today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit the thumbs up there on YouTube. And as always, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Let's see, Gregget says, hello, hello. All right, and Tom says, does Luminar AI have layers? I want to apply a different HSL to a specific area of a shot and was able to do it in Luminar 4. Tom, unfortunately, no, Luminar AI does not have layers. What you can do is use the local masking tool. And right now, the two options that are there, and I think this is gonna grow and evolve over time, but for now, we have basic and we have texture. Under basic, we don't have HSL at this time. It is on our feature request list, but you do have control of saturation and vibrance and also warmth. So those are some color controls that are available there. And you can use those in a similar way that you would layers. Um, if HSL in the local masking would be very helpful to you, make sure you write into support at Skylum.com. Let them know that that's important to you. The more people we hear from on those things, the more likely it is to change and evolve in that direction. So your, your input, your responses really are listened to. So I want to encourage you, if you have a feature request, make sure you send that into support at Skylum.com and we'll get that noted for you. All right. Thank you so much, Harry. I'm glad you enjoyed the tutorial. Everyone else, I want to wish you a wonderful afternoon. I hope you have a chance to get out there and make some photos and have fun and have a great evening wherever you are. I will see you on Thursday. Bye, everyone.